Hi guys, it's Ryan here from SmartSportsTrader.com and in today's video I want to talk about the Making a Million Sports Betting and Trading Challenge that I've been running on my website for over two years now. So I wanted to give a general overview uh, of my results in this time and the strategies used. Okay, so the idea behind the Making a Million Sports Betting and Trading Challenge was to document my progress from start to finish as I attempt to make over a million pounds from the sports betting market. You can see here that a profit um, of £69,863 has been made after 30 months. So it's been a very steady progression. I'm, I'm a very risk averse person, so I've only used very proven methods um, and then just reinvested the profits that I've made and generally uh, just scaled things up as time's gone on and my bankroll's increased. So let's take a look at the, the strategies that I've been using. So what I've done is I've separated my strategies into low risk ones and high risk ones. Um, and you'll see here, I've covered some of these strategies in videos beforehand, um, such as match betting and arbitrage. I've done a video discussing these in a bit more depth. Um, so not with all of these strategies, I won't go into too much depth, otherwise, you know, this video will be very long. But what I will do for every strategy is I'll put a link in the description um, that just discusses them in much more detail. So the first strategy that I use is match betting. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably already got a pretty decent idea of, of match betting. It's just using bookmaker bonuses to guarantee a profit over the long term. Um, the second one is arbitrage betting. Now, arbitrage betting, again, is just taking um, all the outcomes of an event and guaranteeing yourself a profit. So let's just say there's two boxers um, who were fighting on Saturday night and you could back one boxer at 2.02. .02. And with bet uh, with bet 365 and you could bet the other boxer at 2.02 .02 with bet thread that would guarantee yourself a profit that's just a very um, simplistic example um, but the strategy that i'll talk about in a bit more detail is pre-match trading because that's probably one that people don't use as much all right so pre-match trading is related to the video that i did last week regarding reacting to information before the rest of the market and I've got a really good example here unfortunately I didn't get this information quick enough but it just highlights um, how easy it is to make money um, from pre-match trading if you get the information at the right time so we've got Manchester United versus Liverpool here on Sunday and Spain played last night now during the, Sp uh, the Spain versus Sweden game uh, David De Gea went off injured halfway through the match and like I say I missed this information but if you're watching the game and you knew that Manchester United were playing Liverpool on Sunday, and you also know that David De Gea is quite a key player for Manchester United, then you know that the market is going to react. So you can see it happened here last night. This is where De Gea got injured and then the market started to react. So Liverpool were trading at 1.82 at the time. Um, and you can see that they're coming now to 1.76 delay. So what would have happened is if you've been watching that game, let's say you would have seen De Gea come off injured, and backed Liverpool at 182, so I'll just use £2,000 stake here. Um, and then by today, you could have laid Liverpool for £2,000, and that would have created um, a risk free bet of £117 on Liverpool, or you could have hedged it to make about yeah around £65 profit. You could have across all outcomes. So that's all pretty much trading is. Uh, th this is just one example. Probably the best example is to react to. Um, information an hour before the game in England team news is normally announced one hour before the game on Twitter on a lot of accounts so you know if, if there's a key player missing then you can use this strategy uh, and it's really low risk and, and in the long term you can make really good money from it so these are the three lowest risk methods that I use as part of my overall sports betting and trading portfolio um, it's match betting arbitrage betting and pre-match trading and for anyone that's quite new to sports betting or struggling to make money from sports betting, and I'd really advise that you, you know, spend a lot of time um, getting good at all of these three methods. When I initially started to make decent money from the sports betting markets, these were the three ones that I focused on um, before moving on to some of the high risk stuff. And that was really only because I needed to um, scale up uh, the amount of volume that I was doing and try and make more money. But yeah, I'd advise that anybody really gives these three methods, um, you know, a good look at. Right, so moving on to the high risk strategies that I use. Um, these are strategies that should make money long term, but there's a lot more variance compared to the lower risk strategies. So you won't really get that, you know, monthly profit that you might from match betting, arbitrage betting, and pre-match trading. But over the course of say a year, you should make money. 
Um, so the first one is value betting. I've spoke about this briefly. That's using uh, betting exchanges and the Asian markets to give you uh, an indication of when a soft bookmaker uh, might be offering a decent value bet. And I'll go into this a little bit more detail after I spoke about the other ones. The second one is in play trading. This is opening positions um, in play in football um, and closing them before the end of the match. But I also do a lot of in play betting. Um, I'll add a link below to a really good Betfair trader called Paulo Ribello, who is Portuguese. And all his videos are in Portuguese, but quite recently they put English captions on them. Uh, and they're really worth looking at if you're interested in in play trading. Um, the third one is casino offers. Um, I've talked about this briefly before as well, but I'll go into a little more detail afterwards. And the same with tipsters. So yeah, all of these methods, they're all a little bit more high risk, um, but they should, if you do it properly, make, make money in the long term. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about value betting. Now, you can find value bets in numerous ways, and if you just want to start off finding them manually without paying any money for any type of software, and you can do this just using like a, a website like OddsChecker or Odds Portal, um, and just looking for discrepancies really where you see the ones that have odds that stand out. So, for example, here this is a UFC betting. You can see that Jonathan Pierce is 183 with Unibet, um, and he's a lot lower with all the other bookmakers. Now, the sharpest bookmakers for MMA betting tend to be Pinnacle and Five Dimes. So, I, I do this quite often is I'll just load up this site, which is Best Buy Odds which will show me all of the American and the pinnacle lines um, for upcoming UFC fights. You can see here, we've got Jonathan Pierce. You can see that with pinnacle is 1.68 and with five dimes is 1.67. And it gives you, you know, his odds movement here. So you can see that he started at 185 and he's been backed in all the way. So I'll be pretty confident putting my money down with Unibet here on Jonathan Pierce, as this is a, this is a decent value bet. Another way to find value bets is using some match betting software like you get the odds matcher here with Odds Monkey. So if you're already match betting, which probably a lot of people are, then you'll have access to some software like this and it's pretty cheap. It only costs like £15 a month. So you can see here that I've created a, a filter called value bets. Now I just use all the bookmakers that I am limited with and no longer get any match betting offers. I, I just turn them into bookmakers that I can value bet with. So you can see here, I'll just refresh it and see if anything comes up. Right, so we've got a few with Betfair Sportsbook here. Um, these are all tennis apps, so they're also value bets. So with something like this, maybe Pablo Cuevas, which starts in an hour, that's probably going to be a value bet. It's 1.29 and 1.27 with exchanged. So you could also turn this into an arbitrage bet if you wanted to. Um, but I'm normally limited to very small stakes on these, maybe 10, 20. Uh, Bet365 tend to be a bit better. They let you get a bit more money on. Um, but if you're just getting the volume with these value bets, then you'll make money over the long term. If you want to look at value betting on a bigger scale, Rebel Betting provides some really good value betting software. And I just thought I'd bring up some information here from the Rebel Betting website, which is quite interesting. So it says that some users have doubled their money in three months. Uh, and here it says that these are the average results of their users using the value betting software. So the most interesting part of this is um, the expected value and the actual results. So the expected value that's calculated using the sharp bookmakers odds at the time of the bet. Um, and they also add the margin. So you can see here that the actual results um, compared with the expected results are almost the same. So this is after 6,696 um, value bets. So that's a lot of value bets. But it shows that if you put in the if you put in a lot of volume, then you can get some really good results. So here are a few key principles of value betting. For me personally, I only use limited accounts or accounts that don't offer bonus opportunities to value bet with. And that's because much like arbitrage betting, soft bookmakers don't like it when you're taking value and they will limit your account or eventually close it down. So each account has a different value to it. For example, a Bet365 account is very valuable in terms of the bonus opportunities that they offer. Whereas a lot of smaller bookmakers, you might get an initial sign up offer, but then after that, you might not get anything. So for a Bet365 account, I wouldn't start value betting until I've been limited on that account. But whereas, let's say BetStars that don't offer many um, bonus opportunities at the moment, I might just open that account and use it straight away for value betting. So you've got to decide early on when you open up a bookmaker account. Um, you know, the value of it is, is there going to be a lot of bonus opportunities with that account? If there isn't, then, you know, you might as well go ahead straight away into that value betting or arbitrage betting with it. 
The second point to make is that it's always safer to make value bets closer to the start of an event. And that's because the theory is that markets are much more efficient, let's say 30 minutes before an event is going to start, than it would be um, three days before an event is going to start. And that's due to the amount of money that there is in the market. And that's also due to the fact that there's not too much new information that could come out, let's say 30 minutes before the start of an event. Whereas, you know, three days before the start of an event, there could be an injury or weather changes, especially with football. But there's always an exception to make. So, for example, I showed the UFC value bet early on, which was 1.83 with Unibet and 1.7 with a lot of the sharp bookmakers. Now, that's big enough for me to consider that, you know, that's a pretty decent value bet. Uh, the odds could change, but I'd be pretty happy over the long term um, taking odds like that. And the last point to make is that it's a long term approach. You saw with the um, Rebel betting data that, you know, if you get enough volume in, then you're going to make money doing value betting. But along the way, you know, it's not going to be a straight line like arbitrage would be, where you're just going to profit pretty much on a daily basis. Um, and you're going to have to ride out some of the variance. The next strategy was in play trading and betting. Uh, and like I said earlier, there's a really good Betfair trader on YouTube now. His name is Paolo Ribello. He's a Portuguese Betfair trader who's made uh, millions from trading football. And he's done some really good videos related to in play trading on football. Um, he speaks Portuguese and these are all in Portuguese but the, the captioned in English, so you can still, you know, understand what's going on and you can get some really good insight into how you can find value when looking um, at the in-play markets. So in the future, I'll probably do some videos with live examples of this, but if you're interested in in-play trading and betting, then I'd recommend um, taking a look at Paolo Ribello's channel uh, and going through his videos because they're really good. The next method that I use is exploiting casino offers. This is also known as advantage play. So probably the most well-known method of advantage play is card counting in blackjack. There's been you know, a lot of films made about this um, and there's been a lot of books and, and people have done really well from card counting. Um, but I just do it all online and I use a service called Profit Maximizer which deals with all the maths. I mean, again, you can do this manually if you, you find the house edge um, of whichever game you're playing and you look at the bonus that you've been given and how much you need to wager it you can kind of calculate whether you'll make money or not but this is just a huge time saver so i'll just walk you through this offer which is the royal panda bet 100 get 20 pound in cash um, so you can see here it's bet 100 on live roulette and you'll get 20 pound cash the next day so you can see the they've calculated the ev here at 17 pound 30. this doesn't mean that i'm guaranteed to make 17 pounds 30. i could um, lose on this offer but it just means over the long term um, that's the amount that you would be expected to make per offer. Okay, so I've logged into Royal Panda here, and you can see I'm on the, the live roulette table. So I've just put 100 on black, and you know, win or lose, I know that you know over the long term, doing this is gonna make me money. So remember last week I won, um, so it would have been plus 100, and this week I managed to win as well. So we win 100, and then we also get the 20 pounds tomorrow, so just to give an example of some of the variance that you get with casino offers, I've brought up my results here um, for this month. You can see that on the 1st of October things didn't start too well as I had quite a few losses uh, before you know, I had a decent win of £312 and that brought me back into profit. Um, and then I've had a really good month so far, it's not always like this, sometimes you have negative months. Um, but you have a lot of losses and then you'll get the odd big win which will come in. Um, and currently I'm at £2,055 profit so it's been one of the much better months. Um, and we just had that win on Royal Panda. So you can see, again, like I'll say, this is pretty short term, really. It's, I've done 78 offers this month, um, but overall I've done thousands of casino offers. Um, and if you just, you know, you keep plugging away, you will get the odd month where you don't make any money or you'll make a small loss, uh, make a small loss. But you'll also get these really good months, um, which will make up for it. And over the course of, say, a year, you know, you can make really good money from casino offers. All right, so we've covered value betting, in-play trading, and casino offers now as part of the high-risk part of my betting and trading portfolio. Uh, and the last part is, is sports betting tipsters. Now, what I will say about sports betting tipsters is it's really, really hard to find a good one. Um, the majority of sports betting tipsters will lose your money, probably 99%, you know, won't make your money in the long term. Um, so, I've, you know, I've tested hundreds of tipsters um, over the past few years, uh, and it's very rare that, that I really stay with one. So what I will go through is some things that you need to be aware of when you're looking at sports betting tipsters. So like I said earlier, it's really hard to find good betting tipsters. Um, and I am using a betting tipster at the moment, but I wouldn't really want to recommend them until I've uh, 
got more data and had a bit more time with them. So I'll just show you in general tips as to avoid. So you've got a lot of these free um, betting tip sites. So I've just got one up here, which is free super tips. Um, and you know, you'll find loads of free tips here. But the big issue with free tipping sites is they basically work alongside bookmakers to send them customers and then they earn a commission. So you can see all here, they've got all these different bookmakers, um, bookmaker offers. And let's just find a tip. Okay, so they've got free accumulate, free accumulator tips. And anyone that really knows about betting knows that accumulators in general are a bad idea. And it's no surprise that, you know, the headline here is um, the Bet365 sign up offer. So they're just sending customers to Bet365. So any websites like this, um, they just you don't want to take any bets from them because they're not going to make money in the long term. Okay, so we looked at things that you need to be aware of when you're looking at free betting tipsters, but what about paid betting tipsters? So I've brought a betting god site here. They've got a lot of tipsters um, on their roster, and here are their top tipsters in October. Let's just have a look at Quentin Frank's value tips here. So you'll see that he's made £105 profit this month, it says. And if you look at his overall bank growth, it's really impressive. So from October 2015 to September 2019. He's made over £5,000 profit, but something that you need to be aware of with like a horse racing tipster is the time that they send out tips. And these tips are sent out between 5 to 6 p.m. and that's the day before the race. Now the thing about this is that bookmakers really don't like you betting at this time as um, they're quite exposed. This is when they open up their prices. And another thing is that prices will move really quickly. So for example, um, he might send out a tip at say 9.0 and within 10 minutes it might be 6.0. Uh, and then you've lost a lot of value there. Um, so there's, there's two issues really with a, with a tip like this. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't follow it, but it's something that you need to be aware of. So you can't always take um, these things on face value, especially with um, betting tipsters, like with paid betting tipsters, because they don't always tell you the, the full story. All right, so let's look at a few things to be aware of with betting tipsters. Well, the first big one is, are they affiliated to a bookmaker site such as Bet365 or Ladbrokes? Because if they are, in general, you're going to want to avoid any tips that come from people like this. Because at the end of the day, they're more or less working alongside bookmakers to send them new customers. And they make money from their losses. So it's just a really bad idea. Um, the second one is, are the odds quoted achievable? And obviously, if um, a tipster is recording odds at, say, 10, um, like this happens with horse racing tips a lot, but you know, it's very hard to get those odds and the next best odds are seven. And that's going to have a huge impact on the overall profit. And the third big one is, are they proven long term? Now, a lot of people underestimate the amount of bets that you need to prove that you're actually making money long term. So somebody's only got one or two months worth of um, betting data. You know, they've only been tipping for a few months and they're already running a paid service. Then, you know, you're going to want a lot more data than that. To... So last of all, I just wanted to put up my monthly results from the Making a Million Sports Betting Challenge. And I just wanted to make this video to show people that there's a variety of ways to make money from the sports betting casino markets. A lot of people start with match betting, uh, and then once they've exhausted all of their bonus accounts, uh, they basically stop and think that's the end of it. But that you know, there's multiple ways to make a profit. Uh, and if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you for that. You know, uh, you've probably got a much better chance than a lot of people of making money from sports betting because you do have to invest a bit of time into it and, and learn new strategies and and almost see it like a second job. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel uh, as in the future I'll be providing more videos related to making money from, from sports betting and uh, exploiting casino offers. Uh, so yeah, thanks again.